Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilman is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and these are the 10 cards for which I'm the most thankful. That's right, today is Thanksgiving, and you've all probably participated in the tradition where you say the things that you're most thankful for, so I thought I'd do something a little fun and a little different and talk about the cards in Hearthstone, which I have the fondest memories for, or appreciate the most, or I'm the happiest that they're in the game. So these are the cards I am the most thankful for. Starting off with number 10, it is the Druid Minion Ancient of War. I like this one because in my past two and a half years of playing Hearthstone, I think the deck I've trended towards the most is a ramp Druid that's very taunt heavy, which hasn't always been successful in the meta, but it's sort of been my pet deck throughout the years. And Ancient of War has been, of course, the centerpiece of that deck. One of the best things to do in Hearthstone is when your opponent has a board of stuff and you just slam down that Ancient of War, whether it's innervated out or just naturally on turn seven or you have wild growth into it. It's so frustrating. You can almost feel the reaction through the screen where they know they have to burn a ton of resources to get through your Ancient of War and sometimes they just can't do it. So that's the point where you stabilize and start to swing the game into your favor. And that is one of the most fun and rewarding feelings in Hearthstone for me. On to the number nine spot. This is a card that I don't necessarily personally identify with so much as I'm just glad that it's in the game. It's the Shaman spell Hex. And it's a free basic card. So anybody that plays Hearthstone has access to this one. And I know one of the most frustrating things as a new Hearthstone player is you get out there and your opponents are playing all these crazy legendary cards and it feels like you just can't keep up or you just don't have an answer of your own to match what they're able to pull off. But I've made a lot of budget decks in the past, and I've had a lot of compliments in particular on Shaman as a budget deck class, just because cards like Hex specifically allow you to negate all those crazy big scary minions that your opponent has accumulated throughout years of Hearthstone that you haven't even dreamed or imagined of adding to your collection yet. So Hex is the great equalizer. It's a card that even if you're brand new, if you don't have anything in your collection, you can still deal with Ragnaros. You can kill and, and negate Tyrion's effects. You can play on a level playing field with a thing like Hex. So I'm glad that Blizzard was smart and aware enough to include the best removal card in the game as a part of the free basic set that's also very cheap and affordable to run in a variety of different decks. So I'm thankful that this card merely exists. For my number eight choice, it is the legendary minion Emperor Thorasan. I just like this one because it's a card that has enabled so many different things to happen in Hearthstone. The cost reduction that Emperor Thorasan provides means you can set up all kinds of different new crazy combos that just weren't otherwise possible because you'd have to spend more than 10 mana in a single turn to pull them off. So this card is not only incredibly playable in so many different decks, but in many ways it's changed how we thought about Hearthstone and, and changed what was actually possible in the game. And I think that was a really fun and interesting addition. And I'm just glad that I got to play with Emperor Thorasan and got to see some cool new stuff. So I'm happy that we've had this card so long. And I'm actually going to be pretty sad to see it leave standard format in the next few months or so. So be thankful for Emperor Thorasan while we've got him. This is a pretty fantastic card. My number seven choice might surprise some people because it's probably a card you haven't thought about in a very, very long time. It's the one mana minion Undertaker. Now, in its current state, this card wouldn't make my list. But back in the day when this card was first released, its effect, uh, actually, anytime you played a Death Rattle minion, you didn't just gain attack, you also gained health. So there was one deck in particular, Death Rattle Hunter, basically, that had access to countless Death Rattle minions. You'd be able to play one or two Undertakers on turn one and then just load up the board with Death Rattle after Death Rattle, which were also good minions but had the effect of buffing your Undertaker to ridiculous proportions. So imagine a Tunnel Trog that was easier to buff, but also gained health, and you'd have five, six Undertakers on turn three or four. You'd have four or five Undertakers, and they basically became impossible for your opponents to deal with, and it was an absolute just nightmare on the ranked ladder because it was so strong and such a dominant deck. And the reason it was important to me is because Undertaker Hunter was the first time I was able 
to hit Legend. So yes, it was a little bit overpowered. Yes, it was a little bit brain dead. But this was the first card that really carried me to Legend and started my success in Hearthstone. It made me believe that I was good enough to do that and then carried on for the next year and a half to Regis Kilvin as you know it today. I wouldn't make this channel without a card like Undertaker that finally gave me the confidence and the courage to know that I was good enough to hit Legend 2, even if we did have to ride a little bit of an overpowered card it opened a lot of different doors. So I'm personally thankful that this card, regardless of how overpowered it was, did exist and was able to um, change the way I play and think about Hearthstone. So thank you, Undertaker, for that awesome card back that you provided. Now for my number six card, it's really just all about fun. Elise Starseeker is really one of the most interesting and engaging cards in the game. Of course, her effect that allows you to eventually play the Golden Monkey and turn every card in both your hand and your deck into legendary minions is without equal one of the coolest and most nifty and fun things Hearthstone has ever done. So at least Starseeker, not only is she competitively viable because that effect is really strong in fatigue and control style matchups, but she's also just one of the most interestingly designed and ultimately enjoyable cards in the game. So I'm incredibly thankful that Blizzard had um, the courage and the fun to build a card like this and still keep it balanced. And I've played a ton of Elise Starseeker in my day. And it's another card I'm going to be so sad to lose to the standard format rotation down the road. But man, have I enjoyed this card. And I'm super thankful that it exists in the first place. Format number five card. It is really, as far as I'm concerned, Hearthstone's ultimate minion. It is the Azur Drake. When I say ultimate minion, I don't mean the strongest or the best. I just mean like the perfectly balanced, perfectly designed card. The Azur Drake, it just fits. It just works. It does a lot of different things. It never feels overpowered, but it always feels good. It can be run in so many different decks. If you add Azur Drake to your collection, you're going to find a use for it. It's one of the first cards anybody should craft as a new player, and it's one of the first cards you should consider for inclusion in almost any kind of deck. And that having that go-to card that's so consistent and so reliable is such a nice thing to have that you can't go wrong with Azur Drake. It's the perfect card to have in your collection, and I'm thankful to have it myself. Moving on to my number four card, it is the Fiery War Axe. Now, a lot of people actually complain about Fiery War Axe, thinking it's just a little bit too dominant since every Warrior deck runs this card. It is synonymous with Warrior, but I'm actually thankful for Fiery War Axe. Yes, it is maybe too good, uh, just it's ultimately valuable in the early game. But that's what I like about it is that this card has single-handedly kept aggro decks in check. There will always be a warrior to balance out the metagame so that aggro decks just don't run crazy wild because Fiery War Axe is so good at contesting early game minions and keeping you up on the board early that you can't go wrong with this card whether you're running an aggressive warrior deck or a control style warrior deck. This one has always brought balance to the Hearthstone ladder, and I'm thankful that it exists as a perpetual threat as a part of the standard set forever because it will always serve that role, and it's such a strong, reliable card. And now it's time for my top three, starting with Reno Jackson. I mentioned at the very beginning of the list one of the best feelings in Hearthstone is slamming down that Ancient of War and shutting out your opponent, but that feeling is certainly eclipsed by playing that ultimate life-saving Reno Jackson that takes you from 1 health to 30 and instantly forces your opponent to concede the game because they know that you've stabilized and they have no chance at victory. Reno Jackson is equally one of the most rewarding and punishing cards in the game. Rewarding for people who play it and punishing for people who see it played against them. I don't know that there's a more fun design or character or voiceover in Hearthstone. Reno Jackson is is one of the best legendaries in the game as far as competitive viability and arguably one of the best cards in the game just from a fun standpoint because uh, the way he encourages you to totally change the shape of decks with his no duplicate condition that right there makes hearthstone more fun and more engaging and more interesting and challenges some of the the preconceived notions we have about how to build a deck but also of course in action reno jackson is just a really outstanding, visually uh, compelling, and ultimately rewarding card 
that I can't get enough of. I'm going to be incredibly sad when this card rotates out of standard format, as will a lot of other people. Thankfully, Blizzard is continuing that style of no duplicate deck with cards like Kazakis and many of the Cabal Tri-Class cards from Mean Streets of Gadget Zan. So Reno Jackson will probably live on forever in that style of deck, and I suspect even his name will live on forever because I think we'll always call those Reno decks even when Reno Jackson is long forgotten. And I'm thankful for that personally because I don't want to forget this guy anytime soon. For my number two card, it's another one that is... Just insanely, incredibly fun, but also very, very good, and that is Lord Jaraxxus. I remember, uh, frankly, the first time I saw this card, it's the most memorable moment I ever had in Hearthstone, and I don't think I'll ever forget it. My opponent played Lord Jaraxxus, and I saw it come down, and it was uh, you know a little minion at first, and then I saw it replace his hero, which I didn't know was a thing yet. Like, I hadn't been watching videos, I didn't know Hearthstone yet. And I saw that, and then I saw that he had this giant scary weapon, and I saw that his hero power was absolutely ridiculous, that he could spend two mana to summon a 6-6. And my mind was shattered. I didn't think things like that were possible in Hearthstone until I saw this card. And it fundamentally altered my perception of how good and strong late game cards could be. And uh, I, I frankly will just never forget that. That's probably the, the most outstanding moment in my Hearthstone history is that first Lord Jaraxxus play, of course. And then there's the emotes and the fun uh, voiceover lines that he has and just the design of the character. There's so much cool built into this card that I can hardly stand it. And of course, when I finally got my own Lord Jaraxxus and was able to play it, it provided tons of fun with Handlock and Control Style Warlock decks too. So uh, this this is just... Personally, uh, one of my favorite cards from a design standpoint, from a fun standpoint, from a competitive standpoint, uh, Lord Jaraxxus is very nearly my favorite card in Hearthstone, and I'm incredibly thankful that we have him. But he's actually not my number one. That honor goes to Alex Straza. This is the card I am absolutely most thankful for, and that might surprise you, but there's a reason this card is one of my favorites. It's because this was the first legendary that I ever had. So yeah, I've had some good luck opening legendaries lately. Uh, wasn't always that way. It felt like it took me forever to get my first legendary. And when I finally opened Alex Straza, I was thrilled to finally have my first orange and even more thrilled that I knew this was a really good card. So yeah, Alex Straza isn't necessarily played a ton today. She falls in and out of favor depending upon what's popular. But she has a really cool, fun effect, a strong body, she's a dragon, she's a very memorable Warcraft character, which is important to me from a lore standpoint as well. So not only was this my first Legendary, but it was one of the cards that I really relied on early on in my Hearthstone career, because it was like the best card I had and the strongest card I had. So I tried to find decks and situations that could really make this card work. I played it a ton in Combo Druid to set up, uh, you know, like two-turn kills with the combo. I played some Freeze Mage. I basically included it in every deck I had just because I had a Legendary and I was so happy to have it. So Alex Straza really, as a young Hearthstone player... Uh, was fundamental to me enjoying the game and exploring different deck ideas and trying cool things. And that's why, to me, it will always be the card that I'm most thankful for. And that's going to do it for my list. Those are the 10 cards for which I am the most thankful here on Thanksgiving. I'm curious what cards you guys are thankful for. You don't have to give me a top 10 list, but what's your favorite card? What card has brought you the fondest memories? What card do you appreciate the most because of its influence on the actual competitive side of Hearthstone? Let me know. I'd love to hear it all. Thanks so much for watching. Happy Thanksgiving, and until next time, game on.